Grade 5 math, number 15, long division, and where to put the quotient. I'm going to do a quick little review for you. This is a long division problem. You can see this little number on the outside here is the divisor. This is the dividend, the one that it's going into. And the quotient, the answer, is written up here. Any numbers that are left over at the bottom, the remainders, go off to the side of the quotient here. See? Divisor, dividend, quotient. Okay? So here's our first division problem, our first long division problem. I color coded it to help us out. We have 2,415 divided by 7. I'm going to put the answer up here, and I know you can already see it, but I'm going to walk you through how we got it. So we're going to ask ourselves the first thing is can 7 fit into 2? See? Can 7 fit into that 2? <laughs> no. But can 7 fit into 24? Yes, it can. How many times? 3. So we do 7 times 3 is 21. Okay? Now why did the 3 go there and not above the 2? Because we already answered that. It won't fit into the 2. The first number goes into whatever it fits into. Since the 7 fit into the 24, the answer went above the 1's place for the 24. It won't fit into a 2, so it do doesn't go above the 2. See? Alright, so now we know that we've got 21. We've got to subtract 4 minus 1 is 3. And now it's this 1's turn to come down. See? So he comes down and he makes the 3 a 31. And now we ask ourselves, how many times can 7 fit into 31? 4. Because 7 times 4 is 28. So because the 1 came down and helped it become a 31, see, and we were putting the 7 into a 31, we put the 4 above the 1 for the 31, see? We do our subtraction. 31 take away 28 is 3, see, because we borrowed and that turned into a 2 and that became an 11. 11 take away 8 is 3. Then it was the 5's turn to come down and it became a 35. So now because it's a 35, we're going to write the answer above the 5 for the 35. See, it's going to go up there. 7 fits into 35 five times. Because 7 times 5 is 35, we do our subtraction, we get 0. And now we can check it. All we have to do is multiply this 345 times the 7, and if we get the dividend for an answer, then we did it right. Okay? So 345 times 7, 7 times 5 is 35, put the 3, put the 5 down, 7 times 4 is 28, 29, 30, 31. We carry the 3, we put the 1 down. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 3 more is 22, 23, 24. We put the 24. So we have 2,415, just like the dividend, we know that's the exact right answer. Okay? Let's try it again. This time there's going to be a remainder, okay? We need to figure out how many times 5 will fit into 6,241, okay? 6,241 divided by 5. First thing we ask ourselves is, can 5 fit into 6? And yes, it can. 5 can fit into 6, so we do put the 1 above the 6 this time, see? Because it did fit in. 5 times 1 is 5. So we do our su subtraction there, and 6 take away 5 is 1. And now it's this 2's turn to come down, see? And now we ask ourselves, how many times 5 can, five can fit into that 12? How many times can 5 fit into 12? 2, because 5 times 2 is 10. So the 2 goes above the 2 that we lowered, see? It's almost as if it's going right above the 12, and we're ignoring this part as if it wasn't there, see? We do the 5 times 2, which is 10. 12 take away 10 is 2. So now we're here. And now it's the 4's turn to come down, see? So the 4 came down, and we have 24, and we ask ourselves, how many times can 5 fit into 24? 5 times 4 is 20. That's perfect. So we put the 4 above the 4 that we brought down, see? Almost as if none of this was here. See? 
It's as if this part of the problem was gone and we brought the 4 down. 5 goes into 24 four times. We write it up there above the 4 that we brought down. We do our 5 times 4, which is 20. And then we've got 4 left over, and now it's the 1's turn that came down. See? And now we're at the purple. How many times can 5 fit into 41? Well, 5 times 8 is 40. And when, because we brought the 1 down and we were putting the 5 into the 41, the answer goes above the 1. See? We do our subtraction. We have 1 left over. Remainder 1. So now when we check it, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I don't want the video to be too long. But we're going to multiply the 1, 2, 4, 8. That was our answer. 1, 2, 4, 8 times the 5 that was the divisor. We're going to get 6,240. But our dividend was 6,241. And the reason is we need to add this remainder. When we add that one little remainder, we get the 6,241. And then we know we did it correctly. Okay? Now, why do we need to know how to estimate the answer in long division? What's the big deal? Well, in real life situations, at the store, wherever, at work, you're going to end up needing to estimate. And it helps you to know how. Okay? Bob works at a large store. His job is to stack incoming merchandise in the back storeroom. A shipment of 243 packages of paper towels comes off the delivery truck, and his boss tells him to stack them into piles of eight on the shelves. There are 25 available empty shelves. Can Bob do it? Is his boss wrong? So, what is our div dividend and what is our divisor? We've got 243 packages into piles of 8. So we need to m divide 8 into the 243. So, Bob thinks his boss is wrong. Bob estimates that he would need 30 shelves to put them in stacks of 8. But his boss said to do it, and there's only 25 shelves. Bob figures it would work if he stacked them in piles of 10. Why? Why would 10 work better? Well, this is what Bob thought. He's only got 25 empty shelves, and he's got 243 packages. He figures that 24 divided by 8 is 3, so 240 divided by 8 must be 30. That means he must meet, need 30 shelves to put piles of 8. But if he puts piles of 10, that's only 24 shelves. See? And there's 243 packages. So if he rounds it to 240, it'll fit. He actually has 25 shelves, so this would work. So Bob is right. His boss is wrong. Maybe boss, Bob should be the boss, huh? Okay. So when we're estimating, what we're doing is we're rounding our dividend off. 816 can be rounded to 800. That's the closest 100. Then we ask ourselves, how many 5's are in 800? Well, I know 5 times 20 is 100. So if I multiply this 100 times 8, I'll get 800. So that means because we're doing it by 5, the 5 is going to stay the same. And I'll multiply the 20 times 8, and that's 160. Well, that means my estimate is 160 for an answer. All right? Another way we could do it is 100 divided by 5 is 20. And to make this 800 divided by 5, it would be 160 because we'd multiply that times 8 and that times 8. See? So our estimate would be 160. By estimating, we know roughly what the answer should be. This could keep us on track for word problems or multiple choice answers, or even if we're doing the problem correctly could help us if we're at the store. What if you're at a pizza place and you have $40 to buy pizzas and you've got to figure out how many pizzas you can buy? You need to estimate. So if this was a test and you saw this knowing that our estimate was 160, would you have to do this entire long division problem to know the answer or would you be able to just pick the answer from the multiple choice and move on to the next problem? 
Can you tell which multiple choice answer is probably the right one? If you said C, you're correct. We estimated it to be about 160, and look, 163 remainder 1, we know it's not 187 or 210, and 132 would be too small. It must be C. Then you could move on to the next problem, see? You don't have to actually do the problem. So, estimating can help us. Give it a chance. Don't be so hard on estimating. He's just trying to help us, okay? Remember that the dividend is the big number that you're going into, and the divisor is the number that's going into the dividend. Remember the quotient is the answer and that the remainder goes next to the quotient. And remember to bring your numbers down and to ask yourself, what number can the divisor fit into? And block it off with your hand to help you. It'll work. Long division is not hard. It's just long. Okay? See you next video. Bye.